and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. Happy National Coming Out Day, October oh, 11th. That's a good thing to think about. Well, the big news, uh, three landmark LGBT cases went before the Supreme Court on Tuesday to decide the question, is anti-LGBT discrimination illegal because of sex discrimination being forbidden. Uh, the big news is that we have some chance of winning them. Our guest is New York Law School professor Arthur Leonard, who has been tracking these kinds of cases for decades. And in other news that we'll get to after talking to Art, uh, well, as part of that, more than 100 people were arrested outside the Supreme Court in a civil disobedience action. Uh, and this week, uh, Trump halted visas for same-sex partners of diplomats and U.N. employees who don't marry. He just will not let up. Uh, a federal judge struck down Tampa, Florida's ban on conversion therapy. Elisha Stanley was shot to death in Pittsburgh. This is the 19th known trans person murdered in the United States this year. On October 17th in New York, we will mark the 40th anniversary of the first March on Washington for lesbian and gay rights, which is what it was called then. And a red alert, the CDC says that three major sexually transmitted infections are at an all-time high in the United States. All sorts of news, but we're going to start with an analysis of the Supreme Court arguments yesterday and assess our chances in these cases. Do you want to go into any detail about what this is in these cases? Well, I mean, you, maybe we should just say what the cases are first and show the pictures of these people who, uh, if they were alive, were at the court. Uh, because, well... <laughs> One of them is deceased. Yes. Uh, the, the first was a, a, a transgender rights case, Amy Stevens. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a picture of Amy. There she yeah. is. Um, and she, uh, why, don't you, why don't you tell us what these cases are? Okay. Amy Stevens, uh, first name Anthony when she was hired, uh, worked for several years for Harris Funeral Homes, a chain in the suburbs of Detroit and was well respected, doing well, and then she had been dealing with her gender identity issues for years. And yeah. she had started to, uh, to live in accord with her female identity outside of work. Mm -hmm. But in work, she was following the male dress code and grooming appropriately. Uh, and at some point she said, I just can't do this anymore, it's this double life, it's not working for me. And so she decided to come out to her employer in a detailed letter explaining what was going on. And her summer vacation break was coming up. She said, when I come back, I'm going to be in my female persona and I'm going to comply with your female dress code. Don't come back, she well, was told. Well, not right away. Her, her boss took a day or two to think it over. And then he told her, this isn't going to work for me. And well, his, he made, made some religious well, his, argument. Well, his, his official explanation was that he could not have a man dressed as a woman working as a funeral director because he said it would be distracting to the clients. That, you know, these are mourning people, they're coming in, they need to be comforted, et cetera. Don't distract them with another issue. And he also said it offends my uh, religious beliefs. I don't believe that people uh, can change their gender. Okay. As if it's up to him. And shall we go through the, just mention the other? Yeah, then there are two uh, sexual orientation uh, right. discrimination cases. Uh, Gerald Bostock. Yes, from Clayton County, Georgia. Yeah. Uh, he was working for the county, uh, actually supervising a program for children, and was, again, very well respected. Uh, and he decided to join a gay softball league. And the word got back to his employer, out. Now, they claimed that there was some kind of problem with the reimbursements he was asking for for job-related expenses. Nonsense. Something. He says, no, that's, that's not it. It's because I'm gay. They didn't want me working with kids. 
And Especially ironically, there are a lot of uh, straight people on gay softball teams. Right. That's, that's true. Uh, except for those leagues that are trying to be exclusionary. Yes. Uh, and then we have the case of the late Don Zarda, who was a skydiving instructor for oh, a company. Oh, sorry. Don Zarda. Don I had Zarda. him as Daniel. I apologize. Don, sorry. Uh, who uh, was a uh, skydiving instructor for a company out on Long Island called Altitude Express. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Part of the thing with novice uh, skydivers that you're training, you strap the instructor to the student for Andy's the, for the done job. This. Yeah, and he felt this woman felt very uncomfortable, so he said, "Don't worry, I'm 100% gay." <laughs> and when they landed, she told her boyfriend, "He came out to me while I was strapped to him. That's terrible, you know." And then oh, the boyfriend, did she object? I she know the boyfriend, well, the boyfriend objected. objected. The boyfriend yeah. went to the boss. The boss <laughs> said, "I don't think that's good judgment to come out to people. It's fired." Uh, so both Bostock and Zarda sued under Title VII. Uh, Zarda in New York State also sued under the New York State Human Rights Law, which specifically forbids sexual orientation discrimination. Uh, Bostock also sued under the Equal Protection Clause because as a public employee, he could claim uh, some protection on a constitutional basis. Uh, the court in Georgia dismissed his Title VII claim on the grounds that the Title VII, which forbids sex discrimination, doesn't cover sexual orientation. And a previous decision had rejected that argument. Well, yeah, too. there's long standing precedent in the 11th Circuit, yeah. which uh, George is within the 11th Circuit. The ironic thing is the 11th Circuit case dates back to the 1970s. It's really an antique. And furthermore, it doesn't contain any analysis of this issue whatsoever because it seems that the issue of sexual orientation was not the main issue in the case. Well, we've seen this, and we saw this yeah. in marriage cases where uh, uh, right-wing judges would rely on precedents that were yeah. really out of date and had nothing to do with current well, times. Although the Eleventh Circuit has never reversed that precedent. That actually was a Fifth Circuit precedent from before they split the Fifth Circuit in half, and the eastern half became the Eleventh right, Circuit. Now you just lost yeah. me. All right. Now, All right. Before so Don Rio. Zarda then... Zarda was in the in, uh, Federal District Court out on Long Island yeah. in Brooklyn, and... Uh, he sued under both Title VII and the New York Human Rights Law. Yeah. The judge dismissed his Title VII claim on grounds that under the sec Second Circuit precedent at the time, sexual orientation is not covered. Uh, but they went to trial on the New York Human Rights claim, and he lost at trial, uh, partly because the judge gave a charge to the jury uh, that led the jury to believe that they could only rule in his favor if they found that his sexual orientation was the sole motivating factor in the discharge, and they decided it wasn't. Uh, that kind of charge could not be given under Title VII because Title VII specifically allows dual motivation cases. That is, if sex was a factor, then the plaintiff can win the case, even if there were other factors. And that's going to be very important when we start talking about right. what happened in the courtroom. Right. But bef before but we... But he eventually but, but died. He appealed. Well, he, he died after he filed his lawsuit, in fact, after his trial. And then it was on appeal, and he died, and his estate decided to carry it on. Okay. But it went to the Second Circuit. A three-judge panel ruled against him on the grounds that circuit precedent was binding on this. Right. And then it went on bank. That means the entire circuit, I think 13 judges, and they overwhelmingly voted to reverse the uh, district court and to reinstate the sexual orientation claim under Title VII. All right. So the bottom line, and we're going to discuss these cases, uh, um, you know, is sexual orientation, is gender identity, is it sex discrimination? This right. is this was what was at issue in the court. But I, I want to reassure our viewers before we go into this that there are still. 22 states that cover uh, sexual orientation, and 21 of those uh, pr also protect uh, transgender people already states. And there are many localities that do, even within states. I mean, Kentucky, 14 cities protect you right. on the basis of sexual in, orientation. In Pennsylvania, in unless you're living in very remote rural areas, you're protected by local law, even though Pennsylvania doesn't have a state law on this right. yet. Well, yeah. the guy blocking it uh, yeah. just uh, had to leave the uh, legislature. For so maybe we'll get it eventually in Pennsylvania. Yeah. But so I, j I just want to reassure people about that. So what, whatever happens with these cases, those laws still stand. Right. And uh, but but it will affect some of these places, some of these states and these circuits uh, where uh, we're only covered by judicial. Yeah. The, the areas that will be most affected will be the southeast and the Rocky Mountain states. That's where we have the, the least penetration in terms of sexual orientation and gender identity laws. Uh, but will the, if we lose these cases at the Supreme Court, 
will the right wing be emboldened to start attacking some of those laws or regulations to get them repealed or well, they might try i mean Dilute. politics is politics Diluted, you know yeah. i think i think if we lose these cases and there's a possibility that we'll lose uh, we have to really get intensely political and get the Equality Act passed. The Federal Equality Act would, would not only cover this, but it would cover a lot of other things right. as well. It's very important to do. So don't stop working on the Equality Act while we wait for these cases, which we might not get a decision until June. So let's go to the Supreme Court this week right. and the arguments on these cases. Right, and the first thing that you have to remember is this is judicial theater. Yes. You know, what happens in the hearing? How many cases are decided based on the arguments in the hearing? You ask any judge, and they will tell you a very tiny percentage. Right. Because before there's this hearing, all the parties have submitted briefs, extensive briefs, with their legal arguments all spelled out. Mm -hmm. Amiki, that is friends on both sides, have submitted their briefs. The court has more than 50 briefs altogether mm -hmm. uh, on these uh, three different cases all combined. Uh, so. And it's, they're only it, doing an hour right. of argument. It's, it's, been, and, it's been argued up the, the kazoo. Yeah. And so then they go into the oral argument. And in the oral argument, the judges presumably ask those questions that are particularly bothering them, having already studied the issue. Because right. the Supreme Court is what is known as a hot bench. That means the uh, judges have already informed themselves about the arguments of the parties before they go to the hearing. So they're just focusing in on the points, the pressure points, the things that they think are very critical that need to be resolved, and looking for what kinds of answers they get, and then uh, asking one side what they think of the other side's answers. And it's, it's also a forum in which they try to persuade each other sometimes. Yes. Sometimes they use questions to try to make a point with the other judges. But then, after the argument, the court has its weekly conference on Friday. They review all the cases they've heard that week. They do an initial straw vote. Uh, opinions and dissenting opinions are assigned. Uh, if the chief justice is in the majority, he assigns the opinion for the court. If he's in dissent, the senior judge in the majority assigns the opinion for the court. Assigns the writing of the decision. Right, the writing of the yeah. decision. But then drafts are exchanged and minds sometimes change. Sometimes someone who feels that the case should come out a certain way finds that it just doesn't write. You know, that they try to explain it and they keep coming around to another viewpoint. And that's what happened with Chief Justice Roberts in the famous case upholding the Affordable Care Act. Really? Yeah, it's, 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 I remember reading the slip opinion that came from the court that they posted the day it was announced. I think they cleaned it up a little bit after that, which they do occasionally. But there were, sh there were signs that Roberts had written that opinion differently. And then he changed his mind and came up with a theory to uphold part of the Affordable Care Act and just strike down another part of it. And so, uh, you know, his, the majority shifted. He all of a sudden, on certain points, was agreeing with the liberals, and on other points with the conservatives. And it ended up with a decision that, when it was announced, totally flummoxed people in the press who went out running and said, the Affordable Care Act has been struck down. Because the first part of the opinion yes. said that it yes. wasn't supported by the Commerce Clause. But, you know, to get back to this one, uh, this is a big argument about statutory interpretation. And so what people have well, to understand... Let's slow down on that. Yeah. This is not a constitutional, not a constitutional law case. case. They're not deciding on the 14th Amendment it's and equal about protection or, or anything right. like that. This is anything. about what right. is in the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which says you can't discriminate because of sex. Against an individual because of the individual sex. Okay. And when the bill the Civil Rights Bill was reported out to the House of Representatives, sex was not listed. The grounds of prohibited discrimination mm -hmm. were race or color, religion and national origin. Mm -hmm. And a floor amendment was proposed by a conservative Southern congressman who was not in favor of the bill to add sex. Some people say it was a poison pill. Yes. They thought you get it in the bill and then it'll die. Right. Uh, Kill but it. A, a, it passed. But yeah, a weird coalition of Southern conservatives and Northern <laughs> liberals got together and added sex. And it, mm -hmm. then it went to the Senate. And in the Senate, it went directly to the floor under a negotiated agreement to keep the conservative Southern senators, who were the chairs of all the committees, from blocking it up. Uh, so it went to the Senate. Uh, there's very little debate or legislative history about what sex means in there. Mm -hmm. And after an, a lengthy filibuster, it was passed. And by the racists, mainly. Well, was anybody coalition. raising objection to coalition. the sex thing during the debate? They didn't. Th what they did was they inserted a little amendment in there 
to try to reconcile the addition of sex to the Equal Pay Act, which had been passed the year before, and to explain uh, how to reconcile the two. And it's somewhat complicated. We teach it in employment law, and people don't understand Well, it. certainly there's no argument that in 1964, when they were doing this, no one was thinking of sexual right. orientation or Remember, gender identity. the Stonewall riots were five years in the future. Yes, so... The first federal civil rights, gay rights bill was like almost 10 years in the future. Uh, so, so there's no argument that this was thought of at the time, right. but the question then becomes, given our, our broader understanding of these issues now, 55 years later, uh, should the, this be interpreted in right. ways that we would uh, appreciate? And, and this comes down to philosophy of how you interpret a statute. Some people say that a statute has a fixed meaning at the time it's adopted, and in interpreting it and applying it to new situations, you have to recur back to that fixed meaning. Other people say that statutes are subject to development over time, especially as the statute gets older and older and the world changes and knowledge changes. And, that they're a statement you know, of principle, not right. a statement of hard facts. And, and also, uh, and we have this famous uh, statement by Justice Scalia, uh, writing for a unanimous court in a same-sex harassment case. Uh, and he said, well, you, we will concede that at the time they passed Title VII, they probably weren't thinking about same-sex harassment cases. In fact, the whole theory of sexual harassment didn't really emerge till 10 years later. Mad, it was, this was passed right. in the Mad Men era right. when sexual harassment was barely objected right. to, as, at least legally. As, as Professor Carlin argued in her argument to the court. So the, the point is that the Supreme Court ultimately came up with the sexual harassment theory. It was embraced by the court in a decision in 1986. And then the question was to extend that to an all-male workplace, where one particular employee was singled out for harassment of a sexual nature. And the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals said, no, it's only when men harass women or women harass men. And Scalia said, what our legislators thought they were doing isn't what's relevant to us. What's relevant to us is the language of the statute they passed. So if this plaintiff can prove that he was singled out because of his sex, then he has a case under Title VII. And when you add in the famous Price Waterhouse versus Hopkins case from 1989 involving gender stereotyping. A woman who was too butch for that. Yeah, a woman who was too macho. And uh, she was told when she was passed over for partner, you've got to start wearing makeup and style yes, your hair and stuff makeup, like that. Yes, makeup, definitely. Right. And the court said that Title VII was intended to uh, rule out the entire spectrum of sexual stereotyping. And, and David Cole of the ACLU said... made a big point of it. Price Waterhouse said women couldn't be fired for being uh, insufficiently feminine, so how can Amy Stevens be fired for being insufficiently mm -hmm. masculine? Well, it's sort of interesting because her boss thought of her as a man. Yes. All right. So he says she's not masculine enough. Right. But she thinks of herself as a woman, and right. she says, I'm not supposed to be masculine. I'm supposed to be feminine. Right. Let's, let's get to now again. But, but on the theories of statutory interpretation, I mean, uh, the I'm question sure. is, if the words can be interpreted without doing great violence to them as covering these claims, then it should be a permissible right. interpretation. That's the argument that Pam Carlin made and David Cole right. made in the gender identity case. And uh, this is where people get a glimmer of hope, because uh, Justices Ginsburg and Sotomayor and Kagan and Breyer all seem to buy that argument one way or another based on the questioning and the comments they made. Uh, it seems unlikely that Alito will buy that argument. Oh. Thomas wasn't there because he's been sick this no, week. No, he was sick Monday. Was, he was, was there he yesterday. yesterday. Well, he never yeah. said anything. Yeah. No, his name doesn't appear in the transcript. <laughs> so, so, you know, but we know he, he never votes for gay rights. It doesn't matter what he yeah. thinks. Uh, and uh, so it comes down uh, on that side of the bench. What does Gorsuch think? What does Alito think? What does Kavanaugh think? Mm -hmm. uh, Kavanaugh, as you oh, put out to me, made only one sense. Yeah, Roberts, Gorsuch, and Kavanaugh. So uh, Roberts tends to sound reasonable in oral arguments and then to come out against us strongly <laughs> in the opinion. So I'm not holding out a lot of hope for him. No. Uh, Kavanaugh, as, as you pointed out to me, he asked one question and no one knows what it means. <laughs> uh, and he's such an angry, right. resentful guy. And he made no comments. He, he just like made a question. About sex. Yeah. But, but Gorsuch is the interesting question here. Wow. Gorsuch is a Scalia acolyte. Gorsuch believes in textualism. That is, in interpreting a statute, we start with the text, not with the legislative history. And he said during, the, during this, uh, this is a close issue. 
Right. And I'm with you on textual well, evidence. I'm right. with you on textual evidence. Yeah, he also said maybe we should leave this to Congress. Yeah. And well, we risk massive social upheaval if we do this. And 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 that was we pretty and, offensive. And, right. and we should uh, promote judicial modesty. Yeah, judicial modesty is when they're planning to do something bad to us. Uh, but, you know, the, the thing that disappointed me on retrospect, because I read the transcripts uh, when they came out after the argument, I haven't listened to the recording yet because it won't be posted for a few days on the court's website. But, you know, I read the arguments and I thought, well, our side did pretty well in the arguments. I think we have a chance here. But then I thought about it and I thought, why didn't anyone talk about the laboratory of the states? You know, this is a, an expression mm -hmm. that was introduced by Justice Brandeis. He said, part of the genius of our federal system is that we have separate states and we can, they can carry out experiments with mm -hmm. legislation and stuff. Well, we've had a major experiment going in this country for decades now on sexual orientation and gender identity. Mm -hmm. We've got a substantial part of the country covered by these laws, so we don't have to speculate about what happens when a statute is passed that forbids this kind of discrimination. Good. What happens is things go along as before, pretty much. It's mm -hmm. just that people who encounter discrimination can file a, a discrimination claim. And mm -hmm. most discrimination claims are settled in the investigative process. Very few of them get to court. If they do get to court, it, you know, they're going to get washed out on pretrial motions unless it's a very strong case. And if it's a strong case, they'll win. Right. And, and Justice Roberts could say, oh, my God, if we, if we give you these rights, I mean, uh, what about religious exemptions? But they're suing under the Civil Rights Act, which has a religious mm -hmm. exemption right. clause, as all human rights laws do. But they, but yes, Roberts but, and the others do not think the religious exemption yeah. is broad enough. Right. They, and, and they specifically raised it. I, I, forget whether it was Roberts or Alito, who said, well, what about the businessman with religious objections to yes. employing gay people yes. or transgender yes. people? And the answer is that we have not given a pass to well, the people answer is they're from in complying business. with the Civil Rights Act. Yes. You know, we, if they, but they want to. Because of, let's say you have someone who is a very uh, conservative Christian who believes a woman's place is in the home, and he doesn't want to employ women in his workplace. Yeah for religious reasons. He doesn't get a buy under the Civil Rights Act. He does Act. if he owns Hobby Lobby. Uh, no, that's, that's, that's providing certain abortion uh, I'm just abortion extrapolating. Stuff. No. It's yeah. contraception. But, uh, but the point is that a lot of these people in the entire right wing want to expand these religious exemptions. Right. They want to turn this into a theocracy. They don't well, want to acknowledge uh, right. a civil government with civil rights for, for regular people. And yet, this even where people have yeah. religious, yeah. broad religious exemptions, like in Mississippi, most businesses don't want to discriminate. They want right. your money. Agreed. Right. But I mean, there was a brief that was filed, an amicus brief, yeah. by uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of major corporations yes. on our side of the yes. case yeah. who said, look, we don't want to discriminate, and we would like to have a uniform law across the country. Right. right. You know, and, but and we have these five conservative judges right. who may not care about that. No, two That's of true. the people who were raising the bathroom issue in the yeah. transgender case and were, were uh, Justice Sotomayor and Justice Ginsburg and other and right. locker rooms and those things. And do you think yeah, they were dealt well, with? The thing, the thing that surprised me is they were raising those during the first argument, which was the sexual orientation yes. case for which they were relevant. They're only relevant really to the transgender case. Well, but you know, the whole bathroom thing we is... We need a, an LGBT court. The whole, the, <laughs> no, the bathroom thing is so insane because it's always about a transgender person, used to be a man, now now a woman, uh, wants to go into to the women's room. But I mean, we, we uh, cisgendered gay men go into men's rooms with other men we may be attracted to. What's the problem? You know, as long as we don't hit on them in the restroom. Well, exactly. Don't, don't remind them. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, well, exactly. well the, the problem here, and this is the big sticking point, they don't want people with male genitals in women's rooms. And the problem is that a person starts transitioning, they don't get the surgery right away. You know, first if, they're, if doing, they're doing the there, hormones, they're doing the grooming There are no urinals in women's rooms. They go right. into a stall. Right. It's not an issue. I have this now is, been in, uh, in all gender bathrooms where everybody is right. welcome, everybody's in a stall, and uh, that's the yeah. direction my, this is headed. My answer to them is that if uh, the Sixth Circuit ruling in the gender identity case, the Harris Funeral Homes case, is upheld by the court, 
many employers around the country will decide to redesign their restroom facilities, mm -hmm. you know, to make more privacy. And yeah. in fact, this has been the result in some of the Title IX cases which involve schools, uh, where you have transgender students and it almost always comes down to bathroom access issues. And many school districts have spent the money to reconfigure their restrooms to increase the privacy of individuals using the restrooms, and those which cases, is a plus for everyone. Yes, and those cases are still being litigated but right? all over the did, country. Did say, no, no, you talked about as yeah. long as it's a factor, it, then they can win. Yeah. Gorsuch did say sex may not be the only factor, but it is a factor in these cases. And under Title VII, that means it's illegal. He said that. Right. He as much as so, said that. All right. So unless they're going to go back, and they can't go back on that because Congress codified that yeah. in 1991 in a set of amendments to Title VII. Yeah. So the, I, uh, we yeah, could yeah, yeah, talk ahead, about this for six days, yeah. but we really shouldn't. So right. uh, let's get to the bottom yeah. line. Predicting we don't know where it's going to go. Yeah. I'm pessimistic. You guys, I think, are a little more optimistic. I think optimistic. it's very possible. I'm moderately optimistic. Uh, Andy and I will construct a bet after this. <laughs> it's usually a dollar. Uh, but we really don't know. We usually, coming out of these arguments, we have a better idea of where this is going, and we really don't yeah, this time. You should time. bet a $2 bill. <laughs> I have one. Yeah. Don't make, oh, good. Well, then you're prepared to hand it over to me. Uh, but we don't know. But meanwhile, we do have a lot of protections in place, and we should focus on that, yes. and we should continue to fight for more protections legislatively. All right, there are, there are states which uh, are promising. I mean, the, yeah. it's, it's possible that we'll get a bill through in Pennsylvania, for example. Definitely. And lest we forget, instance. the House of Representatives of the United States has already equality. passed the Equality Act, right. and right. there are the votes in the Senate to pass it, yeah. but well, McConnell won't allow it to the floor. There are the votes in the Senate to pass it if they can do it without a roll call. <laughs> if it could be a voice vote, it well, would probably pass. We could need be. we need a Democratic majority in the right. Senate. We need a Democratic president who's not going to veto it. And that is really where we have power and where we can affect You know what? It. If it somehow passed the Senate, someone's got to whisper in Trump's ear, you know, if you sign this, you win the gay people over for the Republican <laughs> Party for a generation. And he might do it. I, I, there's nothing no, he can do no, to redeem himself No, because in the other ear is uh, Ralph Reed and, yeah. uh, and the freak at uh, Focus on the Family. And probably uh, the NRA, too. And <laughs> Pence and the NRA and all yeah. of them saying, we're going to desert you if you do that. Yeah. So, no, I don't think uh, Trump would ever sign a bill like that, And as much as he likes to go out and brag that he's our friend. Uh, he's only uh, the friend of gays who live overseas. Thank you. And they have to stay there. And that's thank a you, lie, too. <laughs> thank you, Professor Arthur Leonard. You can read uh, Arthur's, uh, you, have, you, have a, you have a blog, which we will put in our email. Uh, you also write for the Gay City News about right. all these cases at length. And we will post uh, the links to the, the decisions in our email if you sign up for it. And right now, you could post the links to the transcript for people who want to read it. Right. That's right. And yeah, the, go to gayusatv.org for this. And the, uh, the audio from the arguments, by the time people see, the, are going to be posted on Friday, right. so uh, people can go directly yeah, to it that. It was fascinating listening. And I think our lawyers did, did, did well. Uh, if not perfectly. Right. There were things they could have said that they didn't say. <laughs> okay. That's always the case. All right. All right. Next time. Thank you. Thank you, Art. Okay. And while all that was going on inside the court, uh, there was action outside the court. A civil disobedience demonstration, uh, 133 people got arrested. Uh, Alexis Danzig, our friend, was one of them, and she said, uh, rule against us on this case and you'll see a real demonstration. <laughs> Well, I congr the there they are getting arrested yes. or sitting in on the street. So that was terrific. So, and, and we're going to have to probably demonstrate when this court takes up the, uh, the Louisiana abortion case, which is not looking good, uh, yeah. where they can further trim the, the right to uh, access to abortion. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. Uh, in other legal news, we have a new uh, chief executive officer at Lambda Legal Defense, Kevin Jennings, who you may or may not know is the, the guy who created the Gay, Lesbian, and Straight Education Network That's right. 30 years ago. There he is. Uh, and uh, all the Gay Straight Alliances in schools and went on to the Arcus Foundation and other jobs and most recently has been running the 
tenement museum yes, in New York? Yes, and, and, well, and, and then I see that uh, the human rights campaign is going to have a legal arm now. <laughs> I haven't heard reaction to this much, but they said they're going to take national and international cases. Well, they have hooked up with seven major law firms that they're affiliated with that are going to do this. I'd like to hear what Kevin and other... Uh, <laughs> LGBT legal organizations have to say about that. Well, uh, and, and also on the legal front in uh, Tampa, yes, uh, a federal judge ruled that their ban on conversion therapy was uh, uh, illegal. They can't do that. Uh, it's against free speech. It's against parental rights. And the state should be regulating psychotherapy, not uh, the, yeah. If there's the, any real problem, the state, the, you know, the state board can regulate it. Well, I mean, come on, this is a law. I mean, what, what, these judges don't don't respect uh, the law. Yeah. All right. So, okay, so what else? Let's talk about some Trump stuff. Uh, you know, obviously stonewalling on the impeachment investigation. Only the courts can step in now, uh, or the House can use its uh, 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 power and uh, just get it over with. I mean, yeah, they gotta, they got to move on it. I mean, I'm getting a little impatient. Impatient? They just got started. Uh, what more do you need to know? Uh, look. You, you have to bring the American people along, and they are bringing the American people along. Support is rising, but I, uh, they've got to get it. They've had. Well, uh, they got to get more witnesses, more details, and uh, well, move on this uh, the, firmly but logically. The one thing that seems to have riled up Republicans is his green lighting of the Turkish massacre of the yes. Kurds in Syria. So yes. that's. But but, <laughs> what what a price to pay. Well, exactly, and uh, we'll see how that proceeds. By the way, he kicked off his 2020 campaign with an opening prayer from Paula White, who referred to the demonic networks aligned to destroy the White House, and he got a lot of support from Ralph Reed this week in a book. Um, I wish he would be impeached for uh, now stating no visas for the partners of diplomats or UN employees working in this country if they are unmarried. Yeah, and they, a lot of them come from countries where they can't get married. And they where, could get married here, but yes. then they'd be stoned to death when they go back to their countries. Yes. So that's pretty so awful. So they have to get married by the end of this year or they don't get allowed to come here on visas as partners. And for those of you reliant on food stamps, they're cutting them $75 uh, 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 per recipient a month. Samantha Power called the visa thing unnecessarily cruel and bigoted. As so much that, well, what about what Betsy DeVos did? I mean, you know, she's now being threatened by a federal judge with jail for violating a court order for continuing to collect student debts on a now defunct school, Corinthian Colleges yes. Incorporated. This affects 16,000 students. 1,800 of them have had their wages garnished or their tax refunds garnished. And the judge said, this is gross negligence. I have the right to put you in jail. Do well, it. I'm not sure they would go to jail. You know, they're just stonewalling everything. They're just refusing to comply with the law. They are breaking the law on a daily basis and re rejecting any attempts to get them to comply. Well, at least there's a House resolution condemning Ben Carson for transphobia. Yeah. And uh, now we have news of a case at the National Science Foundation where a manager has been making unbelievably crude anti-LGBT comments to employees. Uh, they, the employees have complained to him and his superiors. They've done nothing. They finally went to the union. The union registered a formal complaint. Uh, and the result of that was that uh, crosses were drawn on the locker nameplates of three employees. Wow. I I'm telling you, it's a pitched battle. And these people, uh, some have said, oh, we can impeach him, but he's never going away. He's not leaving office. And I've thought, uh, oh, what are you talking about? That's ridiculous. I no longer think it's ridiculous. Can I give them a little good news? Be my guest. Maryland, Maryland now allows non-binary options on your personal ID documents. Uh, and then there was this, this is not neither good nor bad, but interesting, the, the, a survey found that one in five LGBTQ youth identify as other than gay, lesbian, or bisexual. They're now using, identifying as queer, trisexual, uh, omnisexual, or pansexual. We have to keep up with it. Can't keep up with the nomenclature. 
In New York City, a new task force has been put together to examine the situation for trans people in jails. And there's a big controversy over the proposal to uh, close Rikers, the big facility, yes. and, and build neighborhood jails. Yes. In uh, Orlando, uh, six designs for the National Pulse Memorial have been, well, they've been unveiled for a bit, but they're, uh, they, you, you can see these at the, if you go to One Pulse Foundation, Dot org. A lot of them are very elaborate presentations, and some of them I found quite moving. They're going to announce a winner on October 30th. It's not just the site, it's like the whole area is being turned into a memorial. I have mixed feelings about memorials. I do too. Yeah. It's the best way to forget something is to memorialize it. Well, and uh, we're going to memorialize all the trans people who have been murdered. Oh. Uh, the Awful. latest one from uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, another black trans woman, uh, Alicia Stanley. She's from D.C., but she and she worked in healthcare. She was murdered on a trip to Pittsburgh, where she was visiting people she considered to be her children, which is a phrase used a lot within the transgender community. And then there have been some uh, strange little attacks all over in Dayton, Ohio, at the University of Dayton. My father's alma mater. Uh, students rallied after this. Uh, uh, well, they put up, they had the flags vandalized, their yeah. rainbow flags. And a banner was torn down. Yes, yeah, so the, what the great thing is that the Flyer News, the newspaper of the, uh, decided to put a rainbow flag on its cover so that a rainbow flag was everywhere on campus. And what's interesting nice. to me about this, this is a school of Marianist brothers who teach there. They taught me in high school and we were very homophobic. But the school was, of course, defending the gay group, mm -hmm. the spectrum group. So that's, uh, that's encouraging. In Syracuse, New York, a Unitarian Universalist church has been hired fire, flying a rainbow flag for three years, but it has now been torn down and burned. Yeah. They've ordered a new flag to replace it. Where, where are we on And this thing? in Olympia, Washington, uh, uh, businesses with, uh, our, you know, fly rainbow flags. In fact, they were flying them for pride and then they kept them up because yep. they liked them. And now signs have been posted around town on some of those businesses, uh, anonymous flyers saying, you are in violation of natural laws of decency. Right. And a, a window was broken yeah. uh, near one of those. So they've, the answer is they've ordered bigger flags. Well, in West Virginia, it's not just uh, vandalism, it's it's harassment. In Morgantown, a mother is suing uh, the Monongahela County Board of Education. Monongahela. Thank you very much. <laughs> Say it again. Monongahela. Okay. Uh, Board of Ed for ignoring homophobic abuse against her son that led to his getting raped. The teacher never, who heard about the rape never reported it. The son had to interact with the rape rapist at school. So Terrible. mother is suing. And in Racine, Wisconsin, a gay man was uh, attacked and viciously beaten by a group of three men on the street. One of those attackers has been arrested. The guy who was attacked had his jaw broken and all his teeth had to be removed because oh he was so viciously uh, beaten up. Yeah, this is the, the this is the societal upheaval that you should be concerned about, Justices. Yes, this exactly. is the societal upheaval. This is what LGBT people live with from coast to coast. Uh, all right. But Governor Newsom wants to give us some more protections. He signed a bill that gives you the right to sue if someone creates a deep flake uh, that places you in a porn film without your consent. Now, <laughs> now, it's also illegal to distribute manipulated videos that aim to discredit a political candidate to deceive voters within 60 days of an election, so get it over with. But 96% of these deep flake videos are porn, mostly featuring female actors and singers who are placed into these things. Now you're gonna be able to sue over that. And also in California, uh, the police in L.A. have uh, leveled a second death charge against Ed Buck, the guy who's Ugh. been luring and killing uh, mostly black gay men with crystal meth. Uh, so now he's been charged with deaths in 2017 and 2019. Uh, plus he has uh, charges for the drug uh, 
used nicer to. story about black gay men in Philadelphia. Yes. Uh, photo of these two guys. Put it up there. Black gay men kissing. It went viral. Tyler Hightower and Adim Tinsley. They're trying. They say they're trying to expand representation, uh, no matter size, color, or religion, and they have gotten jillions of hits on this photo. Nice. Uh, LPAC, the Lesbian Political Action Committee, has come out with a statement about presidential candidates. Yeah. They, they haven't made an endorsement, per se, but they have announced uh, candidates they support. Okay. Uh, and that would be Elizabeth Warren, Kamala Harris, and Amy Klobuchar. Uh, and they generally, they don't exclusively support female candidates, but uh, that's certainly their preference. And but they also applauded Pete Buttigieg for his campaign. So they're they're narrowing it down. They haven't gotten all okay. the way. And I expect we'll have the LPAC executive director here in the next few weeks, and oh we will boy. talk to her. We can about, talk about politics. Yes. And we're going to have uh, Stephen Goldstein down the line, who is yes. also a political operative, who's written a book about how you get people to like you. In politics and life. <laughs> well, Stephen's very likable. Oh yes. So I guess he, he's qualified to do that. All right. In and we like our old colleague at uh, uh, the Gay Cable Network, uh, Dale Hogan. Yes, who uh, turned Put up. Put this in a picture, picture up from, in Oklahoma. Uh, yeah. This is Oklahomans for Equality, and this is the second time that they've been allowed to have a booth at the state fair in Tulsa. It's apparently a, a, an ordeal to get there, and they stuck them right next to a Trump group, but <laughs> they endured, and they said the reaction was very positive Excellent. in Oklahoma. Excellent. Uh, not so positive is the letter from dozens, dozens of trans leaders who wrote an open letter to the human rights campaign saying, look, we're very happy that you're putting some new emphasis on trans issues, but could you please talk to us? and work with us rather than just being your uh, usual isolated self and right. thinking you have all the answers. By the way, in that picture from Oklahoma, Dale was on the right and he was with Toby Jenkins, uh, uh, who was the director of that program. Yeah. Well, we also got a viewer note about uh, the story we told you last week about the rainbow crosswalks yes. that had been disallowed by the Federal Highway Administration. And we had poo-pooed that and said, doesn't the administration have better things to do than get rid of uh, rainbow crosswalks? And the city said they were going to hold on to them. Well, a viewer who works on uh, issues around disability wrote us a very thoughtful note saying, look, I understand this and uh, uh, certainly we don't want discrimination, but in fact, people with visual impairment have a lot of trouble with things like rainbow crosswalks and they can be very disoriented to both uh, uh, pedestrians and drivers and it's not necessarily a discriminatory move and my experience with the Federal Highway Administration has not been that people are there to discriminate. Uh, so maybe maybe this was uh, actually legitimate. No, Trumpism has not filtered down to the Transportation Board just to the Weather Service. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, just don't draw on those crosswalks with sharpness. Hey, now, uh, uh, October 14th is actually the uh, 40th anniversary of the first March on Washington for Lesbian and Gay Rights. We were there. We were. Or not, we didn't know each other then, I don't think. No, that was 79. We didn't meet till like 87. 86. 86. Oh, yeah, 86, 7. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so, the, but there's a picture from it. And I remember going, getting off the bus from New York and going to this thing. And this was the first one. So who's going to show up? And I saw, I saw this vision yeah. and I started crying because, you know, I'm from New York, but I, and you think, you know, it's not, just, but you learned it's not just a coastal movement. Everybody is from everywhere. And it was just very, very moving. Uh, so there's going to be a celebration of that on October 17th at Congregation Beth Simcatora, 130 West 30th Street at 6.30 p.m. on October 17th. Join us. Uh, well, we may have met in, I say 87, you say 86, okay. but we met again this weekend in the New York Times crossword puzzle. Okay. <laughs> oh, God, were we a clue? Here's the clue. <laughs> Anne and Andy, notably. What was the answer? What was the answer? <laughs> well, at first I thought it was going to be raggedies. Raggedy? But it dolls. turns rag dolls. <laughs>
<laughs> you can imagine I'm reading the clue. Anne and Andy, <laughs> notably. When are we going to be a clue in the puzzle? I mean, uh, you know, can't you use hum somehow? I don't know. I guess those are tough letters. I, I will take this. I will take this and just, just interpret it for myself. They don't know what it is. All right. Yeah. Uh, good news from Atlanta. Tyler Perry, he's got this huge compound for his productions, and they are setting up a house, a place for displaced LGBT youth, also for abused women and things like that, and it's to help train them in the business. So that's terrific. Interesting. People need jobs. Yes. All right. International news? Well, we uh, Tampa, else, uh, 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 bum, bum, the, in Ohio, the House Speaker, Larry Hose, Householder, has rejected non discrimination protections for staff, but there, you know, that, that's, not, that's not nice. We need, a, we need a bill there. And, okay. Yes, let's go to international news. Okay. Well, in Iran, a, a Kurdish Iranian musician was arrested for flirting with a man in a private uh, chat on social media. And he was charged with corruption of the earth. And he faces the death penalty. Yeah. Uh, and in Jamaica, they will not criminalize anal rape because they think <laughs> that like... will be seen as repealing the anti-sodomy law. Yes. As a, if you think about it for a while, as a, you could... As a back doorway to uh, repeal the sodomy law. Uh, he said it. I didn't. Okay. Uh, well, it's, 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 it's insane. Tortured. It's, it's tortured. It's tortured. It's insane. Yeah. In Australia, the Bureau of Statistics dumped questions under their conservative government about sexual orientation and gender identity from the census. Uh, they said they don't want to burden the respondents. In, uh, we, we have the ongoing story, I think this is our third week, dealing with the Pride March in Lublin, Poland. Yeah. A husband and wife were arrested because it turns out they brought homemade oh, bombs right, to the right, uh, yes. Pride March. Not nice. Luckily, they were caught, don't ask me how, before they set them off. In France, the uh, right-wingers were set off, and they thousands of them turned Tens out- Tens of thousands. To protest a bill that would simply give lesbian couples and single women access to in vitro fertilization and related procedures. Now, LGBT activists held a small counter demonstration, but the, the reactionaries shouted, liberty, equality, paternity. <laughs> This has already passed the lower house. It has to go to the Senate now. The good bill. Yeah. And it's, and, but France is going to continue to ban surrogacy, uh, as, the, as New York does. These are the same people who protested against same-sex marriage. It is the hard right wing in France, the nationalists. Uh, they, they just show up. Tens of thousands of them at a time. And Italy is pretty, pretty reactionary. A gay man there was told that as a single parent, he could only adopt a child with health or behavioral problems. This guy, Luca Trapanisi, 41. So he adopted a girl with Down syndrome in 2017. Uh, he's long worked with people with disabilities. And now he has more than 100,000 followers on Instagram as he raises his child. Well, this is the kind of nice story that can help promote uh, our civil rights down I hope, the line. I hope. Uh, in Britain, uh, complaints as we noticed that very few people have been pardoned under the Alan Turing law, which was supposed to forgive uh, people who had been mostly gay men who had been arrested and convicted for yeah. uh, they're, sex. They're being very withholding with these uh, pardons. They are because they're saying, well, you were charged under public sex laws right. and that's still in like force. So. Being in the park. I mean, yeah. I, I, under when, when they liberalized uh, uh, laws about homosexuality, you still had to have it in your home and no one else could be in the house and no one else, no one else could be in the house. Had to be two people, no one else. That and, was that became and legal. don't scare the horses. Yeah. In and, Russia, in St. Petersburg, uh, a district court has ordered two LGBT groups to disband. Uh, why? Because they published information about their groups online, and that violates the no uh, homo propaganda law. They the are appealing. Will, yeah. Well, and in Japan, you know, it, it, it's against guidelines, but four clinics are giving reproductive assistance to LGBT couples. They are committing civil disobedience. In Taiwan, uh, they've put together some statistics, and just since the legalization of same-sex marriage in May, there have been 1,827 same-sex marriages, 
34 divorces. Two-thirds of the marriages have been female couples, one-third male couples. So Justin Trudeau, we haven't talked about his history with, with blackface and things like that, uh, you know, which is of concern. But the conservative candidate for prime minister, Andrew Scheer, says, no pride marches for me. And he's been dodging questions about whether he even supports same-sex marriage, which is the law in Canada and has been for a long time. Well, that's what he said. It's the settled law. That is the common... Yeah, that's what Trump said. Oh, well, that's settled. Uh, uh, it Until is it's meant, not. It's, yes, exactly. That's what they won't admit. They act as if they will comply with the law, but uh, that is to be determined. Uganda, the government there is reintroducing the anti-gay law, the one that was annulled by the court. They want to mm -hmm. give it a comeback. Yes. Uh, it, it was annulled because it was passed illegally, procedurally, uh, but the government is hot to pass the anti-homosexuality bill again uh, because the they say uh, it's learned behavior, not natural. Someone should send them the book about animal gay behavior. Better news from Brazil, uh, despite Bolsonaro, the prosecutors have filed charges against the citizenship minister for suspending funding for LGBT-themed um, films. Uh, he says they were, that, that the minister was motivated by prejudice, and that, that's a no-go. In Hong Kong, where, as you know, there, is a, uh, there are bigger fish to fry, but a gay man has sued the housing authority uh, telling, because he was told he can't share his apartment with his, ha his husband. They got married in London because the husband is not recognized as family in Hong Kong, and this is some kind of government-subsidized housing. China's got a big foot, doesn't it? It does. Uh, in uh, Ghana, watch out. Brian Brown and the World oh Congress of Families God. are headed there for a conference shortly. They, you know, they're not giving up. They're going all over the world. And we're not giving up either. Uh, in Russia, a man is suing Apple because he says his iPhone turned him gay. With those apps. <laughs> Stop watching, sir. And in Ireland, uh, they have been fighting over the rating for the Downton Abbey movie because there is a, a scene where... Uh, it's in a gay bar. We have a picture of and it. And there's a lot of homophobic language used, and so they felt that should not be shown to children. Right. So they wanted to give it a higher, yeah, more restrictive rating. You could only go when you're 12, but right. now you can go when you're 8. Yeah. Because yeah. They, uh, the, the filmmakers appealed it. Yeah. I mean, I think kids can figure out when it's, it's a bad thing when people use bad words. You know, I think they can understand that. Well, especially if they go with people who explain it to them that way. Yes. That would be nice. Okay. AIDS news? Yes. Right. Uh, well, Governor Newsom signed another bill to offer PrEP and PEP without a prescription, uh, as they do with birth control and emergency contraception. So, and this also bars companies from requiring prior authorization, and you can get a 30 to 60 day supply on demand. This is the first over the counter availability in this country anyway of PrEP and is considered a great step forward that people can make a decision to go on preventive medicine and not have to go through a big rigmarole and can or get insurance. Coverage, yeah. Right. Uh, in, also in California, the Fowler Museum at UCLA is uh, mounting an exhibit called Through Positive Eyes Photography, Storytelling, Events, Video uh, through the middle of February, put together with consultation with 130 PWAs, people living with AIDS, and it's supposed to be quite spectacular. So now, if you are close that. watchers of uh, Gay USA, we, we've tracked the rise in sexually transmitted infections, but the CDC told us this week that three types are at an all-time high, gonorrhea, syphilis, and chlamydia. Uh, and they've been rising for the fifth consecutive year, more than two million diagnosed uh, of the three diseases. Uh, the most, they said, since monitoring of STIs began in this country. There's been a decline in condom use, uh, but there's also been a surge in people getting tested, so you get more people testing positive. Uh, the highest rates are among adolescents and young adults, and uh, the, most, the highest concentration is in the District of Columbia. Uh, good news from New York State, where in 2018 there were yet fewer new HIV diagnoses, 
2,481, down 11 percent from 2017, down 28 percent from 2014. 32,000 people are on PrEP, which is up a third from 2017. Uh, more people are getting treated to undetectable status. Uh, the New York City uh, Department of Health says we're having the success because we're using a data-driven sex positive approach. This right. is uh, the state trying to end the epidemic here. But in the United Kingdom, where you have trouble getting your pardon, it's also true that at least 15 people who were on waiting lists for PrEP and PEP uh, have c converted. For a trial. They were on a waiting list for a trial. Well. And please, just because you can't get into the trial yet does not mean you shouldn't be practicing safe sex. And frankly, keep using condoms after you get start on uh, PrEP because you, you can get STIs. all these other STIs, yeah. some of which are not curable. The uh, FDA has approved Discovy for HIV prevention, uh, shown to be less harmful to kidneys and bones. But, so they say. But generic Truvada is about to be made available more widely. Yeah, Gilead is the maker of both Truvada and Discovy. But, they, but Discovy was not tested in women. Uh, yes, so it's not approved for them, although a trial is starting in South Africa to try to make that happen. But this is, you know, Gilead, the patent was running out on Truvada, so there's this other drug which uh, they can now continue to charge more for. And there's an AIDS panic in Iran villages. Oh. Hundreds have been infected, uh, they say, by unsanitary practices in clinics. You remember the China story Two last week. Or was it already there? Major protests going on, uh, claiming the government is giving them Better HIV. news from Ireland, where nine in 10 HIV positive gay bi men were undetectable and cannot transmit the virus. That's terrific news. Okay. Uh, 53, 54, okay. Um, All right, entertainment news. Yes. How about that Ellen DeGeneres and George Bush? You know, they were pictured at a Dallas Cowboys game. She got a lot of pushback since Bush is a war criminal and opposed her right to marry. Uh, Ellen says, be kind to everyone, even if you disagree. Uh, there are limits to that, Ellen. I think we should be polite to people we sort of encounter in society for the most part, but that doesn't mean we have to be friends with them unless they repent. Or maybe you could say something to them. Yeah. Uh, and why do I have, oh, you saw a play, The Great Society. Uh, it's about Lyndon Baines Johnson by the guy who wrote All the Way, which won the Tony with Brian Cranston, but this is with Brian Cox. And I, I, it was one of the most aggressively bad things I've ever seen. Uh, they just, it, they, you know, it's a, uh, nobody captured the essence of Martin Luther King, Bobby Kennedy, Hubert Humphrey. That's, that was supposed to be Richard Thomas as Hubert Humphrey. I, it was, ugh. Uh, and the Connors, the, uh, you know, which used to be Roseanne, Darlene's uh, gender nonconforming son, Mark, came out as gay. He's 12 on the show. Uh, uh, the boy, and it came up in the context of him having kissed a boy at school, but the boy denied it, and it's a whole thing. Uh, also on the uh, voice, the twins, Stephanie and, the, and her trans uh, male twin, Dane, Dave, Dave uh, both 21, they were a huge hit and they were, will end up working with John Legend. And sorry to see Rip Taylor go. You gave me a lot of pleasure, made me laugh. He made it to 88, survived by his partner, uh, Robert Forney. We should end the show with confetti in honor of yes, Rick Taylor. Yes, oh my God. Thank God we didn't. I can't tell some of his jokes. I'll get in trouble. <laughs> well, they, that's true of I almost did, everyone. I did laugh at the time. All right. Well, Thanks for being with us, and we hope to see you next week. And uh, go out and pass the equality bill. Please.